subscribe and ring the bell to never miss an update. Hello everyone. Today on Lady Mary Bath, I'm taking you back to my stomping grounds, Sealy, Texas, a place where I lived as a child and again as a young adult when I started my career with Waterford Crystal. We are shopping Stockyard Antiques, a hidden gem full of vintage treasures, collectibles, and more. Join me. Sealy is about 45 minutes from Houston, 30 minutes if you live in Katy, Texas, and a wonderful place to spend the day. You can find something for the porch and holiday items. This is a fantastic hand-painted piece for $3.75. They are starting to get the store ready for the holidays. You will find some vintage treasures if you pop in. And I can't wait to take you inside and discover even more. This was originally Port City Stockyards, owned by our friends, whose family founded the Houston Fast Stock Show in 1931, known today as the world famous Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. I spent time here as a child enjoying tacos in the El Vaquero Texas Grill and watching cattle auctions. It's surreal to be back here today showcasing antiques in this building. Let's have a look. A surprise find here on the grounds with a sculpture from internationally acclaimed artist Roberta Harris. This once stood in front of the Omni Hotel in Houston and they've actually contacted the artist to see if she might want to be part of the restoration process. She's created private and corporate collections including for MTV, Chase Manhattan, Frito-Lay and the Texas Heart Institute. We are walking inside the former Port City Stockyards can't wait to take you inside and we will discover some amazing finds all under one roof. It is definitely worth a trip out to Sealy. Welcome to Stockyard Antiques. It's like round top under one roof. Many eras and styles are represented. It is a best kept secret and great shopping source for designers, antique dealers and influencers. I'm delighted to take you inside today so that you too can discover this wonderful shop. There are so many different alcoves and areas in the store and they are artfully arranged. You definitely get some great interior design ideas and some ways to repurpose the vintage and antique finds in the store. Clever displays and some fantastic items. There's a wall of silver, just about everything you could ever imagine, including a samovar and Waterford crystal. This is a pattern that I sometimes see at estate sales. It was popular in the 1970s and early 80s. It is the Ashling pattern, and it's actually retired. All Waterford crystal pieces are acid etched stamped. That is usually on the base. It can be tricky to find if you have a different item such as a paperweight or biscuit barrel. Sometimes it's actually between the cuts. This has a gothic design and that's how we know it is the classic Waterford. These retail for $105 today for a comparable wine glass. Of course, the Ashling is a retired pattern. A wonderful transferware collection that spans the centuries. You can be fall ready with a turkey platter and for every day, the teapots. You see a lot of the blue and white transfer wear and of course the red and white, which is often known as pink, but the sage green is not one that I see every day. It's a very soothing color. You will notice the castles featured in this pattern and that came later in the transfer wear history. And you'll also see there are different size plates. For $6, you could have a bread and butter you could buy three different sizes and use these on your plate wall as the wall display. Alfred Meakin, Queen's Castle, of course, made in Staffordshire, England. 
And that's where most of the transfer production was at that time. And we'll talk more about some of the factories. If you have a transfer pattern that you incorporate into your everyday, would love to hear from you in the comments below. We use the Bergenland Blau, which is from Villa Rheinbach, and that's been around since 1926. This biscuit barrel is extra special. Davenport Freiburg in that octagonal design. Fantastic piece. Let's look at the back stamp. Love that crown. And it is ironstone. It's a beautiful pattern. And this has a bit of chinoiserie, you can see with the pagoda. John Maddock and Sons. And it is vitreous, vitrified. It's the Bombay pattern. And that gives it some more strength. A lot of Villarenbach pieces are vitro porcelain, which is the vitrified. Of course, that classic blue willow. Many different manufacturers, too many to count. We'll definitely talk about some of them. There is an abundance of transferware. It got its start in the 18th century with blue and white plates and platters imported from China. With the emerging British middle class, there was a demand for affordable and attractive dinnerware. Multicolored transferware is extra special. This open vegetable is $24. Love that oval shape. It is from Staffordshire, England. You'll notice it says dishwasher safe, which means that you can date that to about the 1940s or newer. Originally, transferware was mostly chinoiserie inspired with the designs, and eventually we saw English and American landscapes and buildings commemorated. And here we have a southern plantation. That is quite a different look for transferware. This is Heritage Hall, and it gives us lots of information, because remember, when you turn it over, that back stamp is a roadmap to the history of a piece. There's a lot of history in this design and plate with the manufacturer, the time period, and it is something that is highly collected even still today. A great example of flow blue from the late Victorian period from 1885 to 1920. We see a lot more white on the plate. It's not quite as decorated. There are some embossing along the rim and some Art Nouveau curves and florals. This is a great example. I have talked about Flow Blue extensively in a previous segment at High Street Antiques. I encourage you to take a look. If we look at the back stamp, we can see this was made by Thomas Till and Sons. And the pattern poppy is across the center of the globe. Thomas Till elevated himself to the Victorian middle class. In 1833, after producing affordable pottery with a partner, he started his own business in 1850 with his son, Edwin. And he also won a Certificate of Merit in 1855 at the Paris Exposition. And that was a feather in his cap. This line was produced until 1928. I will definitely be on the lookout for Flow Blue when I'm in Germany next month, shopping the flea markets. The Blue Willow is an iconic pattern. And as we look at the back stamp, we see it also has a bit of history. This shop has it all. A great example of Thomas Till when he was with the partnership Dudson, Wilcox and Till. This classic chinoiserie blue willow platter with a beautiful and historical back stamp. Beautiful glass in the window. Of course, I'm admiring the mid-century amber glass, a set of canisters. That's definitely collected today. Mid-century is so popular. And then we have the classic from the mid-1900s, the etched crystal. And there are four different styles available. You can have a complete set, sherbets, ice beverages, clarets, and goblets. It's a classic design, and a lot of work goes into each glass. It's definitely worth $20 a stem. Here we see a beautiful hand-cut ice beverage glass. And it's $20 each. You get a discount if you buy more glasses. And this is actually, in my opinion, the most useful. You can serve a parfait dessert. It's great for iced tea. And in the South, we have lots of ice in our glasses. Of course, for water as well. But this actually has a history and a name. T.J. Hawks. 
This is a company that started in 1880 that is quite renowned in the hand-cut crystal world. Thomas Gibbons Hawks founded his company in Corning, New York in 1880, and he took Europe by storm when he won the coveted grand prize at the Paris Exhibition in 1889. This is the same year that the Eiffel Tower debuted in Paris, and both are still standing. It's such fine quality etching, you definitely don't see that in beverage glasses today, and it's all in the details. Lots to discover, including some furniture pieces. This is a wonderful cabinet. Look at all of that carving there at the base. $650. This would be a wonderful addition and great storage to your dining room or kitchen. And I can even see this in any room of the house for that matter. It could be in a bedroom. And the Dimitas cups, aren't these fantastic? Great for a bouillon, even a dessert, maybe a pot de creme. They've got quite a nice collection. I like to feature different Dimitas. It certainly does not have to be in one matching set. A familiar Dresden set of six for $65, and that's in the U.S. zone, made by Schumann. We've talked extensively about that manufacturer in a previous segment. A marquee by Waterford Vase that takes me back to the 90s. This is a collection that I especially enjoyed, the Nautic. $22 for that bud vase is a very good price. It was $49 originally in the 90s. A Party Perfect Punch Bowl from the Imperial Glass Company. This is EAPG, Early American Pattern Glass from the early 1900s, well priced at $45. Think about the many ways in which you could use this with or without the pedestal. A fruit salad, chips on a buffet, centerpiece bowl, just about anything you can think of. This blue glass is very familiar to me. I found this at thrift stores, made by the Fostoria Glass Company for Avon. That creamer is practical, perfect for brunch. And these were originally candle holders. They held votives. And of course you can use them as goblets. Martha and George. A cake pedestal that is coveted by many. That square shape is extra special. And of course, this is the Fostoria American Pattern Cake Stand. Many of us collect on the Lady Mary Beth's table on Facebook, that's our group page. Some of you have found it for deals. And 150 is actually a very fair price. I've often seen this for 250. And for a mid-century look, we've got some lighting wear for you. And that's not something you can find at your local store. Look at those vibrant colors. $125. It's really a great opportunity if you're trying for the mid-century vibe with that avocado green and harvest gold. Love the pink glass. And we've got some other pieces here that I think are extra special. Let's take a closer look. A great example of carnival glass from the Jeanette Glass Company. This is the oval marigold centerpiece. I can see this with fruit, even using it maybe on a work table to store your brushes. This would be a fun piece to add to your everyday. I have visions of centerpiece ideas dancing in my head. This is a fantastic vessel. Love the shape and the style. And here's another great find from the Imperial Glass Company, the beaded bullseye vase in that wonderful emerald green color. It is well priced at $45. I've seen it for twice this on eBay plus shipping. That's a deal. Mid-century was all about barware. It is definitely experiencing a resurgence today. And these are known as DOFs, which are double old fashions. Mid-century barware is for the casual and chic connoisseur. And one company that is synonymous in decorated glassware is the Culver Company. They started in Brooklyn, New York in 1939. They are known for their gilded designs, whether it is an owl, leaf, Asian inspired, or anything in between. 
And this set of six of Tyrol glasses would be a nice addition to your barware collection. A lot of companies today are reproducing some of the vintage pieces, and I would much rather have the real deal, of course, with that cool vintage vibe. This looks straight out of Mad Men. And of course, they do shop the secondary market for their episodes. I've recognized lots of patterns that Hollywood uses, some of which are in my home, which is always fun to see. Culver Glass Company was certainly not the only one producing barware in the mid-century. Anchor Hawking, George Briard, many other companies. We'll take a look at a great example of one of those in just a minute. But I wanted to mention that the Culver Glass Company sold in 1996 to Modern Glass, one of my vendors in the corporate world. And they are bringing back some of the classic Culver designs with a contemporary twist. It's the perfect color combination and a wonderful set of six of these mid-century highballs. Priced at $75, lots of possibilities. It would also be perfect for winter or fall with the pine cones, the touches of aqua. And as we see on the bottom, there's the L for Libby. The Libby Glass Company worked with artist David Douglas and produced these wonderful aqua and gold pine cone highballs. They're priced at $75 for a set of six. He was also known for making the genie bottle popular in decanters and carafes, probably inspired by the I Dream of Genie series. And these are fantastic. I can even see iced tea on the porch. If you've been looking for a pop of color, you have just found it. A pair of cane chairs. Can't wait to tell you more about these, a bit of the history and ways that you could embellish. Look at that detail. These are known as Baker chairs. These Regency tub armchairs are chinoiserie inspired with the bamboo. It's a great pop of color. I can see a cushion made with tassels hanging down the back to add a wonderful addition to your living. $750 for the pair may seem high, but I have seen these sell for over $3,000 for the pair. Acrylic was also popular in the mid-century. A set of eight tumblers for $75. So many uses for these highballs. And they pair nicely with this tortoiseshell tray since they both sort of have the same look. George Briard was a popular Polish-American designer with a French name, and the American housewives embraced his housewares and tabletop creations, sold at high-end department stores. Brass is perfect for fall with the warm undertones. A pair of ducks for $165. That could be an interesting addition even to a tablescape. And as you can see, they stand the test of time. Delighted to find such a vast collection of flower frogs. I have to think of my friend Julie Davies. She is a YouTuber with a channel called Flower Start. She's the florist who teaches. She's based in the UK, and I've learned a lot from her about floral arranging, and she does some great thrifting. And I'm sure she would enjoy finding this wonderful assortment. And here is a fine lady. The Cambridge Drape Lady is a showstopper flower arranger. She can be placed in a console bowl, and that makes a beautiful centerpiece. Take a look at a previous video where I show you a spring look. And this leads us to an extensive collection of flower frogs, including some vintage ones from Japan. Lusterware flower frogs. These are fantastic, priced at $20. This could be an item of interest you place in a centerpiece, even a side table, create a nice look with that. And one that is actually quite literal, a flower frog. How about that? with a beautiful back stamp made in Japan with a shofu mark. I'd love to know the history of that. In the beautiful cobalt, we have a clay piece here from Sid Walker, $24. It is made in Scotland. That would be a wonderful addition to your collection. 
And of course, the very practical metal flower frogs. This one is $16. They have just about every shape and size. This one's very industrial looking, $45. Of course, you have different vessels, shapes and sizes. And this one was made for a very famous French fashion designer that you would least expect. It's priced at $85. And it's made in Italy for Christian Dior. I wonder if this was a gift with purchase or a special holiday gift. That is a sweet, sweet piece. A wonderful piece of furniture here and I say that because it is a clock that they have repurposed into a display and beautiful glass pottery so much to discover in this shop this is sort of an art deco 1920s design a pair for $48 these are beautiful I've not seen these before they are called Chippendale and I think that's a great price. And there's even a larger one. You could create a nice display on your table. This is a vintage Austrian flower frog. It's actually known as a pansy ring. And that's something that I've seen in Europe occasionally at flea markets. This looks to be American Brilliant. Look at all of those wonderful cuts. It is a heavy piece. Such detail, $110. You'll notice the stem also has cuts on it. Another flower frog for $18. You could channel your inner Mary Poppins. That's fun. Maybe for a baby shower. Caput Monte piece. For $85. So many different styles and options here to add to your decor, your tablescapes. A great way to spend the day. Lots of silver utensils in this room and more china patterns. This is an antique cabinet from Batesville. And we find some mid-century double O fashions here with a carrying caddy. And these I'm sure are Culver. Look at that detail. Yes. Set of eight for $250. And we have lots of information on this pattern. Love all of the surprise finds here today. I see some elegant glass of the Depression era and a beautiful china pattern from Royal Dalton in the Rondelet. My friend Camille recently purchased this at Goodwill. She's got an extensive collection now. She got for quite a deal. Beautiful back stamp with a lion and crown. Here's a closer look at those elegant glass goblets. And they pair nicely with the green rondelet. Cake stands are so practical. Of course, you can stack them, use them in so many ways. $20 is a deal. Would also be a great gifting opportunity. Some hand-painted china with that sugar and creamer and a bargain find. I was excited to find these. I wish that I had a party coming up because that would give me some ideas. A very sweet Southern look. And the carnation pattern from Royal Dalton. Tea party perfect. The Royal Dalton carnation pattern was made from 1983 to 1998. You can see the soft pink and blue, which is typical of the 80s. This would be a great opportunity to build an affordable tea collection. At $5 for each cup and saucer, add a pitcher or three, very well priced. This could also be a table or party favor for a bridal luncheon birthday celebration. 
$5 each, you can't go anywhere and get a favor at that price. A brass samovar and a beautiful bookcase. I'm going to take a closer look at this. I know that many of you enjoy the antique furnishings. And this is a burled wood walnut secretary from about 1880. It's priced at $1,150. It is a wonderful, stately piece. Such detail. And inside we have a collection of rare books. What a beautiful assortment that is and nicely displayed. It really is like shopping in an interior design store when you're here at Stockyard Antiques. Works of Irving. Quite a comprehensive set. They are known for rare books and we'll take a closer look at some of these. 27 volumes. Washington Irving. Some nice porcelain pieces as well. And here is a glimpse at their rare book collection. You could spend a lot of time here. And most of these are from the 1800s. You'll want to look for the gilt edges. Many of them also have hand cut pages. And inside we have some copper engraved prints that are used as illustrations. There are many German families that settled in this area of Texas. And here is a book from 1906, Neue Kirche Ja Buch. This was part of the Evangelische Kirche, which is known as the Lutheran Church in the United States. It is from 1906, it is $25. Isn't that amazing? A piece of history. I'm always looking for chinoiserie. It is great inspiration. And it's always nice to add a few pieces to your collection. And this cabinet is fantastic with a gold lacquer. It almost looks like a lighted cabinet. I see some Korean celadon as well. It is a gold leaf interior, 950 for the cabinet. And speaking of gold, look at this gold edged plate. Just love this design. And they have six available. I wonder if it's Limoges. Let's take a look. It is Royal Bavarian from Huchenreuter, made for a New York company. And I always have an eye for Wedgwood. I see this Jasperware plate. Have to take a closer look. Well priced at $25. Again, that would make a great gift. When you think about going to a box store, what can you get for $25? Really not much. Herend is a Hungarian manufacturer with a beautiful back stamp, and their items are very expensive. These vintage baby shoes at $48, and the Rothschild Bird, I think, is a fantastic price. They have a lot of 1950s linens as well. Lots to discover. And for the washstand, wouldn't that be a nice addition? 150 in the Art Deco style. Vibrant colors. And the sunflowers are catching my eye. My older daughter, who now lives in Germany, absolutely adores sunflowers and the color green. At $60, this needlepoint has kind of a combination of cross stitch as well. That is a bargain and it's framed and this is going across the ocean. And now we're going to take a closer look at another collection. Toby jugs became popular in the 1760s and they are highly collectible today. They carry back stamps such as Royal Dalton, Burlington Ware, Wooden Sons. They are ceramic pitchers modeled in the form of historical figures, persons of interest, even animals. And they have a tricorn hat from which you pour the liquids. Let's take a look at this collection. My friend Cassidy has a nice collection of Toby jugs that she inherited from her grandmother. It's nice that it's something that's still enjoyed by the younger generation today. And there's some familiar ones like the old Mac, $25. 
Rural Dalton, I would say, made the majority of the Toby mugs that you find today. And I am surprised that there are other manufacturers that maybe are not as well known here in the United States. And we learn from the back stamps, of course. For $20, here's a Burlington Wear jug made in England. And from Wood and Sons, this Toby has an interesting shape priced at $30. And this one stands out as being a bit different. It doesn't have the clay look. I believe that that is made of porcelain. Price at 65 and it is made in Germany. The first Tobies were seated, jovial men with a tricorn hat, puffing on a pipe and holding a mug of ale. This is the first one that I've actually seen that's made outside of England. This is a Toby from Germany. I haven't been lucky enough to find Toby jugs in a thrift store yet, but I am still looking. It'd be a nice start to a collection. We have some German beer steins mixed in as well. I'm also noticing as I'm admiring these Toby jugs that someone has taken a vintage yardstick that was a promotional item given by a bank and placed it here on the shelf that adds interest. And what's even more interesting to me is that this is from Cuero, Texas, a town where I lived in later childhood years. And what a nice surprise and a great use of a yardstick. Here we have a hidden alcove full of pottery from some of the famous makers. And you'll notice the addition of seashells. I quite like this. I think shells are underrated. They go with so many different looks and styles. This centerpiece from Roseville at 175 is a showstopper. Love everything about those. And this double woodland vase could be very interesting on a side table or even as a centerpiece. It is from Hull, priced at $35. And this vintage Roseville Rose Bowl is fabulous with that glossy glaze. This room has since been transformed into vintage Christmas. It is quite a sight to see. It definitely gets you in the holiday spirit. And back here, I wanted to point out a desk that has an interesting history with a Texas artist. And we even have some of the original information inside. This was an invitation to an open house. The artist is Lillian Butcher. Formal dress optional. I love everything about that. The University of Texas featured her in a program and this was her desk. You could have a piece of history. And for brunch, this is perfect. Great way to start your day. It was very popular. I can almost see it in the Brady Bunch. The nesting bowls from Pyrex priced at $225. These are highly collectible. I'm sure that they will not last. Lots of kitchen items, including Crocs. It's always worth looking through. You might see something that reminds you of your childhood. And I just love rolling pins. I have my grandmother's and that's something that I use often and it always reminds me of her and it's practical. It looks very much like this one. And now we will enter the other side of the store and discover some interesting items. Welcome to the man cave. This is what they call the other side of the store. Very reminiscent of the Round Top Antiques show. There are records, barware, boots, pottery, and everything Texas. Lots of Texas represented here, including some license plates. One as old as 1969. Barware seems to always be popular. I often see the sesquicentennial glasses celebrating Texas's 150th anniversary after the fight for independence. And the Tower of America's glass. 
My parents married in 1968, the same year as the Hemisphere, and they also had their honeymoon in San Antonio. Love ya blue, Houston Oilers. That was our football team for years. These double fashions are, I'm sure, hard to find. And it's now the Tennessee Titans, based in Nashville. You know you're in Texas when you find boots and cowboy hats at an antique store. There's a pie safe and a vintage frame that has an interesting tie-in that I wanted to share with you today. These you often see in round top. Antique frames have become highly collectible, especially those from the 1800s. You see these in round top often. And many folks will remove the photo, place fabric or wallpaper inside, and even display vintage plates. You can get creative with some eclectic vintage decor. This actually has a connection to the town of Seeley and to my school years. This came from the estate of Maggie B. Selman. She was a distinguished educator and my elementary school principal. She left her entire estate to the Seeley Independent School District. Two schools have been named in her honor. This is most likely her mother, Emmy Ketting Brune. An array of Western boots and hats. Definitely a man cave here and some old records. Elvis, Jim Reeves. And this room has some interesting items too, including something that ties in with JFK. And it's not the teacup that I found at the guild shop. It's a bank bag. Lots of Texas items in this room, including a bank bag. This is from the Oak Cliff Bank and Trust Company, it was founded in Dallas in 1856. This is an area that at one time was upscale. I think they are revitalizing it. What's interesting is the historical tie-in with John F. Kennedy. The movie theater where Officer J.D. Tippett found Lee Harvey Oswald was in Oak Cliff. Definitely some masculine items here if you're looking to outfit a boy's room or even a guest room and you don't want to go too feminine. I see quite a few items that you could add. And if you have a country house, then you probably need to think about some of these wonderful crocs and pottery pieces. And this one has a very special logo. More Dallas, Texas history from the Love Field Pottery Company that started in 1923 on the Love Field Air Base. They were in operation until 1948. And the logo is actually an airplane. And in the center, you will see the words above the mall. This has one of the newer back stamps. Love Field is one of the two major airports in Dallas. It can sometimes be a challenge to find more masculine home decor pieces. And this mid-century pottery lamp would be the perfect item for a boy's room or even a guest room, $75. This antique walnut chest is 300. And we have some more Texas items here with some interesting books. Some of these might have been library books. This one has a beautiful cover. We'll have to learn more about it and the author. Lots of Texas books and they sell fast. This is one I wanted to share with you. It is called Inez, A Tale of the Alamo, written by Augusta Jane Wilson about an orphan's spiritual journey. What's interesting is the author herself had quite the journey. She was born May the 8th, 1835 in Columbus, Georgia. Her family fell on hard times and she moved to San Antonio, Texas in 1845. Keep in mind the Battle of the Alamo was in 1836. Texas was still a republic in 1845. And five years later at age 15, in 1850, she wrote this book, it was published anonymously in 1855. She was a famous American author and a pillar of Southern literature. So glad you joined me today for Stockyard Antiques in Seeley, Texas, my stomping grounds. I learned a lot today, found some great things, and now the secret is out. You can shop like the influencers, dealers, and designers. Thanks again for joining Lady Mary Beth. Elevate your everyday with antique shopping.